Hey everybody, welcome back to Swan Drang Hill. So last time I did state I was going to upgrade my paladin, fully train it, and I've done so. And I've kind of learned everything about the class as to offer, and it's really good, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, as you can see, I've got some more fashion. So just to run down what I've got. i got the redstone cloak, because I thought it looked pretty cool, and you get it from the little red riding hood quest. I'll explain if someone's interested. I got the enchanted light guard helm, I bought that from Artix, and I've also upgraded my destiny weapon to level 28, which the highest I could go with the undead slay badges, and it's 55 out of 85, which is really good. Best weapon I've got so far. And I will to upgrade this weapon, you do have to have finished Artix's storyline, but because I'm a little bit impatient, I want to do it like straight away. So I did run through and finish all the quests, but it doesn't really make a difference for any of you. So I haven't like ruined anything. So let's go to the gatekeeper. Now that Zobat gives his student ID card, the gates on the Acropolis are opening for us. We have to get down there, past their guards, and see if I can figure out what the necromancers are planning. I still can't believe we are going to try getting to the Necropolis with Zobak's ID card. What is there to worry about? Well, it expires for starters, and he was apparently expelled. And it has a picture of a blue morgan on it. No problem at all, my friend. We can solve this the same way we justify all the plot holes and bugs in this game. How do we do that? Magic. There is one problem I have not been able to figure out yet, though. There are two of us. But we have only one student ID card. Well, do you want to wait outside? That's a joke, right? Hmm. I have an idea. You know about the undead, right? Just follow my lead. The gatekeeper must resist edge to vanquish evil. Halt. Who does enter the necropolis? Tis I, um, Zorbak. The greatest necromancer in the land. I may well am a little dead minion. Artix. Nudge. Um. Oh. Oh. Ah. Ew. Ew. Hmm. Brains. Let me see your student ID card. Sure, sure. Here you go. You do not look like your pictures, Zorbak. Yeah, that's because of, you know. Magic. Oh well. Yes, that is understandable. Wait. This student ID card says that you have been expelled. Magic. Hmm, yes. I see. That would explain it. But this card is also expired. Magic. Ah yes. That happens all the time. Okay, you may enter. Welcome to the Necropolis, Zorbak. Thank you. Let's go, my own dominion. Certainly. Let us just walk right past these undead monsters without attacking them even a little bit. Artix. Are you alright? Yes, I just... I just need to... To... To rid the world of these servants of evil. Attack! <laughs> oh, we didn't get Artix on our team. Shit. Alright, so I'm not really going to explain everything too much, I don't really want to spend too much time doing so. But, I've learned pretty much about everything does, I know what this does. It basically unlocks the skills, so... These some skills are a lot too light damage, like this. Dawn. Uh, light damage. But if you press this, it unlocks it, so it does like weapon element damage. Which in my case is light anyway. But what it does is, it stops these abilities being enough to generate in the light. So now if you say here, plus one in the light, if we turn it off, it doesn't generate the in light. So by default the paladin kind of wants to be used as a light based damage class. Kind of like hints at it a little bit. And we've got a load of other skills, not, I'm not really going to bother going through them, it's not too important. Uh, one thing I should say, the more inner light you have, the stronger some of the skills are. For example, this was Sabi, where it says heals 6% match HP. 
actually heals more with the more stacked of in the light you have. And this skill also heals more as well. So some skills will get boosts depending on the amount of in light you have. Which is really cool. Anyway, let's go see about the skill lens. 575. So normally what you do is you would like use your multi. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to stack boost, boosts of this because this skill increases your overall damage of like everything, which is really cool. And as you can see, it's 60 and then it goes to a 90 when we use it again. So what I'm going to do is, one thing I like to do, uh, go use Prism next because Prism does a minus 15 to all. So it makes you do more damage, basically. And when you've done Prism, you'll wait until the next turn. And then you'll use the second stack of the Radiant Elements. So we'll use this. For a lot of damage. That did like over 400. Which is really good. We are taking a bit of a beating, aren't we? But also, like, increasing the stacks of the Radiant Almond gives us, like, a good amount of defense. And because of that, uh, we avoid and block a lot of attacks. So it kind of makes the Paladin a bit more tanky. So I'm going to need to do it on this guy because this guy's going to be dead soon. And no, I'll not do it on him either. I'll do it on him. So we'll get Aura of Light. This also um, gives you a 20 boost. So basically more damage. And then... I'm going to use my next attack on this guy again. So and then we've got this, which is the third stack. As you can see, it's going to do a shit ton. Obviously, he killed him, so we didn't really get to see it. But we're looking at around 600 damage. Just a bit less. And now, since we have like this and this already on this boss, we've pretty much stacked up for damage. Now what I can do, as I, as I said before by the way, this now heals 15% and this now heals stay 7.5 so that's because we've got more stacks of inner light, uh, 8. Now we can consume 5 inner light so I'll plus 100 to our base damage but it also lowers our crit chance but that's fine, it, stop, it stops the paladin being OP basically and now we'll use our multi attack which we'll do <laughs> A hell of a lot of damage, basically. So basically, to break things down, the Paladin is very good for, like, over time damage. Like, it requires a bit of setup, but it is very powerful. But it's not very good, like, big burst damage outright. Woo, that was close. Yes, it was. I'm very sorry, Minute. I just could not help myself. That's okay. I knew that we were in for a battle. I just didn't think it would be too soon. This soon? It's kind of annoying that I'm blocking the things, but stupid. I hear a lot of movement below. Perhaps something else is going on. Oh yeah, I did also look at the customization options for the Paladin. But honestly, I really like this look. Most. It's probably my favourite look for the Paladin. So far. It goes really good with the helmet as well. I hear a lot of movement below. Perhaps something else is going on. There he is. Noxus. The army is almost complete. The world shall be wrapped in the internal embrace of Danus. Hear me, des denizens of the necropolis. I applaud your skill and effort, but you have little time left to complete our most grand project. And now you have a hundred million undead, unlike anything the world has ever seen before. I expect every necromancer in the necropolis to redouble their efforts. Especially you necromantress. As you desire master. Just as long as you hold your end of the bargain. And return my brother to me. Look at them. Thousands of loyal soldiers for sepulture. Your skill continues to impress me. However, as my top student. Your recent defeat in Moonridge is quite unsettling. I expect you to redeem yourself by making an example of these two meddling heroes with your latest creations. Now my student, all my students, back to work. 
Sir Budger's flying castle will be here soon, and Sir Budger expects an army almost twice his size. Sir Budger is raising an army of a hundred million dead. Maynard, are you think are you think what I'm thinking? We jump down there and take our fifty million dead each. Whoa. You were thinking what I was thinking. We need to destroy the ones that I have created the whatever and stop them from making more. Just the two of us versus the entire underground city of Walking Dead. It'll be a slaughter. That's the spirit. No, my slaughter. Two heroes against the whole army. Yes, two heroes against this army of darkness. I've always wanted to fight a desperate battle against the incredible odds. Looks like you're going to get your chance, Artix. Now, if only we had a map. Oh look, there is one conveniently printed on the back of his Necromancy University student handbook. You've obtained the Necro U handbook. To be continued. There's a whole lot of undead right there. If Nox is able to hand off the army to Sepulchre, Valkyries and the rest of Law will fall into the darkness. You have to think of a way to stop him. Next up we have the body shop. Now that we have a map of the necropolis, we can really do some damage to those necromancers. First that stop is the place they call the body shop. Okay, according to the map on the back of the necro handbook, this area is called the body shop. There is no time to look for loafers and body wash that smells like fruit antics. I mean now, there was always a time of personal hygiene, but this is not that kind of body shop. Here it is. According to the handbook, this is where they have their Build a Beast workshop. Oh, and it's worth four credits. This mess will be cake. <laughs> If we can get into the workshop, then we should be able to destroy the foul methods they use to make some of the monsters. Sabotage. Now this is my kind of quest. All we do need to do is get inside without being noticed. Then we can take out the necromancer who runs the workshop and vanish without a trace. We just try to avoid drawing any attention to ourselves. Says the guy you could have walked past the guards, or felt the need to destroy them instead. Where in luck, the necromancer is by himself. Good. That means we can do this quickly and quietly with no uh, lights, please. Oops. Standing up in front of the class with no idea what's going on. I think I've had this nightmare before. At least I'm fully dressed this time. There must be less than 50 of them. We could take them. I don't think that's a great idea. If you'll blow our cover. We might never get back down to the Acropolis. Yeah, but... But... <sighs> oh, fine. And that concludes the lecture portion of the class. Now I will need a few volunteers for the tab blab portion. How about the new guys? No. I beg your pardon? Uh, we missed the lecture. Maybe you should pick someone else. No. I think it will help you remember to get to class on time. May I be excused? I need to use the restroom. You should have thought of that on your way to class. Can I go to the nurse's office? I feel sick. Uh, yes, you may. Really? Certainly. We get most of our body parts from donations from the nurse's office. I'm feeling better. Excellent. Then let's get to the lesson, shall we? For safety reasons, we'll watch you from outside the lab. Safety reasons? Eventually, young necromancers, you will learn to create creatures using your own dark powers. However, for now we'll use the university's SNM, uh, Simply Necromantic Monster Army. All the control that you need are in front of you. Use the creature claw to grab the three parts from the part pit. As you grab them, the three spare parts will show up in the retrieval jars located against the wall. Once you have all three parts, use the SMM to create your monster 
and we'll see what you come up with. That sounds easy enough. Oh, be careful. Sometimes the claw will grab an undead monster that is still partially functional and will try, will with one L, uh, try to attack you. Just use our ability to command the undead to drive them back into the pit. That could be a problem. Oh boy. And be very careful in there. The SNM is not cheap. If you damage the lab, it will slow down the monster production for Subulcha. Let's do... It's kind of random. Let's do upper left. Shit. Necro slime. Yeah, one, one thing about this class I really don't like... Well, it's not really that, it's it just, it's more of like a shame that these are like a really good nuke type skill. You know, like a, that's good at clearing up trash mobs. The, they'll kind of gain power over time, but you don't really get any good nuke skills that are like one shot most basic shit. You have some of these, like this one and this one and this one, which could do it. Which I do really like these skills. It's just, I wish there was some strong alternatives. You have all three parts you need. Oh, a squeg. So there's another thing I don't really like about the Paladin as well, that is no, like, mana restoration skills. You know, because this class uses quite a lot. I know that skill was only 10. Well, most of the other skills are, like, 20, 30, and uh, it goes through mana pretty quick. I mean, look. We kill those like skeletons and slimes and we've already got like nearly half the bar. They got even the regular attacks are really powerful with that. Uh fuck's sake, why is it doing this? It's really annoying. I think it's just the positioning of my character. That little battle of yours totally destroyed the lab. Uh yeah, sorry about that. Uh the that creature had to be destroyed. It was out of control. Of course it was. You something supposed to be controlling it. Master Noxus will not be pleased. But there's nothing we can do about it. This lab is very sensitive. No. I don't know. You'll be something from the neck expelled uh, I don't know. From the necro you <laughs> fuck off. Let me see your student ID a few weeks later. Oh yeah, we'll be fined. Meh, a letter from the school? What do those losers want? What? This is a bill for... How much? <laughs> well done. You defeated your Rari and build a beast. And destroyed the body shop in the process. You have slowed down production in the Undead Army. But Spolster is still on his way. Shining Paladin Belt. Interesting. That looks, uh, decent. And if he knew you could get Paladin belts, <laughs> maybe it's Artix's belt and I just stole it off him. Right, I'm getting Artix this time. And I just realised that we haven't been using Draco for this shit, but oh well. Too many cooks. The Draco managed to cooking up something horrible, and we have got to stop them. There is a section of the necropolis that is called the Ice Crematorium, which doubles as the university cafeteria and evil food laboratories. I'm not sure what the plans are, but this is something big. We'll bring those one step close to taking down the necropolis. This is the entrance to the ice crematorium. There is a lot of activity surrounding this place, and I can feel evil coming from inside. But how can we find their plans? I think the issue is, my head is... Well, the helmet is a bit big, so it's blocking the box. I have an idea. That just might work. Hey you. Me? Yeah. What are you doing in the ice crematorium? Oh, they have found a way to make zombie food and vegetables using a magical soup. And they plan on affecting all Doomwood. There won't be a single farmer's market or attacker stand left once they attack. They are mass producing the broth and testing the food once inside. Thanks. No problem. Why did I not think of that? We've got to get in there and spoil every single cauldron of that sinister soup. Sinister soup? Yeah. You know, the chicken and morning... Minute, this is serious. 
these food zombies could be a real threat. Uh, <laughs> night to the living bread. Zombies walking around, money, grains, grains. Okay, okay, okay. I get it. I think I might have just the weapon for the task. Great, let's see it. Holy wasabi. You just carry that around with you? They technically I do as well, so I have a skill for it. Yeah, I cannot get enough of this stuff. I put it on everything. But you have to use just the right amount or it ruins the whole meal. That sounds just perfect. Let's get to it. Go inside. This is quite a little bit annoying because it's kind of like a... A little bit maze-like. A little bit maze-like. These enemies are actually resistant to light by 15, but our weapon, like, I would damage pretty much any other weapon, so it's fine. But yeah, it can be a little... Oh, there's one there already. It can be a little bit annoying because it's very maze-like and everywhere looks the same. Can I kill it with the normal attack? Nearly. Shame. Okay, add wasabi. Wasabi, three left. Yay. I don't really like quests that feel like you're not progressing. You know, like, normally you can... You go through a quest and it's like... You, you're always moving forward. Like, I don't really like them where you, you're kind of just running around in the building. Getting shit. Maybe my dislike for that came from farming the stupid... Doom Essence from, you know, the, um, Haunted Castle quest. Fuck. You're just running around in a single building. There's like a million skeletons to kill. Not literally, but it feels like that when you're playing it. And Wasabi, two left. Awesome. And one left. And the last one is all on the very top. Like this door here. What's through door number 10,000? King Burger. Do you get it? It's like Burger King. I assume that's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. I'm going to get a light resist. Uh, I don't know why I bought you bothered explaining that because I always do it. <laughs> I, re I really like, um, you know, as I said, I'm really enjoying this class and as I said as well, that is generally better as a sort of, um, you know, the longer you're in the fight, the better you get, the stronger you get. It's kind of like the Dragon Lord's Bulwark type thing. Patience, Bulwark, either way. Either way. It's kind of like that. So the longer you're in the fight, you start getting really powerful. The King Burger has fallen. Now the evil food corruption broth has been ruined by our takers holy wasabi. Doom what is safe from giant evil foods, yay. Celery stalker, that's terrible. Why why would the game even offer me a low 15 weapon? I might as well be slapping the enemies in my dick. I have a level 2 train. I've been just getting up my strength recently. I kind of I like when I've got like a good bit of these, I mean, I don't have much endurance, but because Paladin heals so much and has good defenses, it doesn't feel as mandatory to get some right now. But I've just got 10 just to kind of, just a little bit, you know, 10 is like 50 extra health. So we'll go for 140 strength, try and get that up to max. And I, I will be leaving this video here now. The reason why this one might be a tiny bit short, I don't really know how long it's going to be because I haven't edited it yet. So we just did too many cooks. Uh, these four quests we got left. And if I do like an extra one, maybe an extra two, then the next, next video will be really short. So kind of got the time to leave it here and then let's do all, all these four next time. So either way, thanks for watching there. I'll see you on this one. Goodbye.